the top four most powerful angels in the Bible. The Bible is a book full of angels, and the reality of angels is something that is quite literally undeniable in Scripture. The two most common angels known in the Bible are Michael and Gabriel. There are those who argue that Michael and Gabriel are not the two only archangels. This argument is based on the fact that in the Apocrypha works, you will find other angels which are referred to as archangels, such as Raphael, Uriel, Saraquel, Raguel, and Remiel. Today we are going to speak about angels found in the canon of Scripture, the Holy Bible. Now this list of the four most powerful angels includes good angels and bad angels. Number one, the fallen one, Lucifer. Lucifer was created with a tremendous amount of power and beauty, and the Bible on multiple occasions describes his position in heaven and how he was cast down. His name doesn't come from Hebrew, but Latin. Perhaps this translation into English was influenced by the Latin Vulgate, which uses this name. In Latin, Lucifer means light bringer. The Hebrew is Halel and means light bringer, shining one or morning star. Many modern translations translate this as star of the morning or morning star. There are religions and groups based on this premise of Lucifer being a light bringer, Lucifer being someone who is there to illuminate you, to open your mind up, to open your spirit up, to bring knowledge. These groups portray him as being a misunderstood character in the Bible, and that God Almighty is the one who is trying to hide stuff from us, but He, on the other hand, wants to enlighten people so that we may become like God. This is the same lie He told Eve in the garden. Genesis 3 verse 5, For God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. I am not saying this in order to exalt Satan or uplift him in any way, shape, or form. However, he is a powerful being that should not be taken lightly. He was able to take Jesus on a mountain top and offer him all the kingdoms of this world. If Jesus would worship him, that is power. If he did not have power over the kingdoms of this world, he would not have been able to offer that to Jesus. Lucifer is a powerful being. He is not someone who you can just treat anyhow. Now let us look at his fall. Isaiah 14 verse 12 to 15 How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Ezekiel 28 verse 14 and 15, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, thou hast walketh up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Despite Satan's desire to exalt himself, he will not be exalted at all. Certainly there is a sense in which he is exalted right now, but this is but a blink in the scope of eternity. Satan, like all those who desire to exalt themselves, shall be brought down. From Ezekiel 28, we learn of his high status before his fall. Satan himself was this being of great perfection, wisdom, and beauty. And we know 
that even now in this day and age, Satan still masquerades himself as an angel of light. Number two, the Archangel Michael. Michael is known as God's Archangel, which means chief angel. Scripture often refers to the Archangel Michael as a chief prince of the heavenlies. Angel Michael is one of the archangels in heaven which is associated with warfare. You may notice that most of the time when he is mentioned in scripture, one would notice that there is a battle to be fought. He is a spiritual warrior. He specializes in fighting battles. On multiple occasions, we see Michael and Lucifer have direct interaction or direct conflict. Jude 1 verse 9, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Revelation 12 verse 7 to 9, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent, who was called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. This alone should show you the rank of Michael. The fact that he literally is described as a being that can go two to two against the devil. In Daniel 10, Michael was found to help an angel to wage war against the prince of Persia, who tried to stop the answer to Daniel's prayers. The archangel Michael will play a major role in the end time events. As you would expect, we see in the last days in Daniel 12 verse 1, at that time, Michael shall stand up the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. Please notice the choice of words of the Bible. He watches over the sons of your people. Not only is he the angel associated with warfare, but he is also a protector. Furthermore, he might be the angel of 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16, of whom Paul writes, The Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. The third angel, Gabriel. Gabriel is one of only two named good angels in the Bible the other one being Michael, who we have just discussed. Gabriel is sometimes referred to by people as the Archangel Gabriel. However, the Bible never gives him this title. Michael is clearly referred to as an Archangel in Jude, but Gabriel is not mentioned as such in the Holy Bible. The major function assigned to the Angel Gabriel is that of delivering good news to the people of God Gabriel is also associated with good news. He was sent to Zechariah, the priest, to deliver the message of the conception of John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus. On a particular day, Zechariah went into the temple, and we see in Luke 1 verse 11, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. This angel was Gabriel, Gabriel gave Zechariah the news that his wife, Elizabeth, would bear a son. This news was strange to Zechariah, as he said to the angel in verse 18. Zechariah said to the angel, What proof is there for this? I am an old man, and my wife is beyond her childbearing years. The angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in God's presence. God sent me to tell you this good news. But because you didn't believe what I said, you will be unable to talk until the day this happens. Everything will come true at the right time. I want you to focus on this one phrase that Gabriel said. I'm Gabriel. 
I stand in God's presence. He is an angel who stands in the very presence of the Lord. Gabriel reminds Zechariah of who he is and where he has come from. Also, Gabriel was sent to Mary, who became the mother of Jesus in Luke 1 verse 28, with the following words, And the angel came in unto her, and said, Hail, thou that art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and, behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. It was also Gabriel that appeared to Joseph, the fiancé of Mary in Luke 1 verse 26, to appeal to him to not leave Mary, because her conception was of the Holy Spirit. Because each time Gabriel appears in the Bible, he is giving good news to people. Society has painted him to be a cute, flowery little messenger boy that resembles Cupid. This is completely incorrect. When Gabriel appeared to Zechariah and Mary and Daniel, all three were stricken with awe and gripped with fear. Luke 1 verse 12, when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him, and Mary in Luke 1 verse 29, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Daniel says in Daniel 8 verse 17, So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell on my face. He had to reassure each of them before continuing with his messages. Number four, Abaddon, Apollyon. Revelation 9 verse 11, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. The angel in charge of the locusts from the bottomless pit is Abaddon, Although Satan has gone by many names, Apollyon is not one of them. Abaddon appears to be a demon who works under him, who rules an abyss full of locusts that will arrive on stage during the final days. 